this individual rescued a crocodile from certain death. Years later, an unforeseen event occurred. Some of the planet's most perilous creatures inhabit aquatic environments. Many possess formidable jaws and are adept at lightning-fast attacks. Consequently, fishermen usually take great care to avoid them. Ombo was akin to his fellow fishermen. He led an unassuming existence. However, everything changed when he had a close brush with a ferocious sea creature hailing from Kalimitan. Ombo had spent a considerable portion of his life in the water. With an aging wooden fishing vessel, he embarked on daily early morning expeditions to catch fish. Destined for the market along the docks, Ombo's efforts sustained his newborn son, Booty. Each haul of fish helped provide for Booty's education, shielding him from the necessity of pursuing a career in fishing. As Ombo had during his youth, working solo, Ombo undertook the arduous task of readying bait and fishing lines, as well as launching his boat into the sea each morning. His residence adjacent to the river meant he only needed to navigate a narrow stretch for around 10 minutes before reaching the serene expanse of the sea. One serene morning, as the sun remained concealed behind the horizon, Ombo set out for one of his preferred fishing spots. His predilection for arriving before his fellow fishermen was intact. Yet, had he foreseen the aquatic encounter awaiting him that day, he might have reconsidered launching his boat at all. Growing up on the Benton Islands, Ombo had witnessed their evolution into a petite city over his lifetime. During his childhood, he and his father would spend hours in their boat without encountering another soul. Now, the horizon was dotted with large vessels transporting coal and materials to the island. While this development brought increased prosperity to the local economy, it also introduced greater pollution into the river. Despite the changes, Ombo endeavored not to let them trouble him. His bond with his hometown endured through the marine life inhabiting the waters. Even on his days of respite, he'd venture to the reef for swims, exploring new fish species. He discovered that the most remarkable creatures often presented themselves when least expected. Having anchored his boat and arranged his gear, Ombo readied himself to relax and observe the sunrise. However, tranquility was fleeting as an imminent shift. In the water drew his attention. Suddenly, one of his fishing lines jerked to the left. Leaning over the boat's side, Ombo initially presumed it was a sizable fish on the line. Yet, the passing shadow beneath the boat appeared too pointed and substantial for a mere fish. The force on the line caused the fishing rod to be yanked into the water. Ombo's response was delayed, and he couldn't manage to retrieve the rod in time. The boat rocked, prompting him to stabilize it. Just then, a colossal green form emerged from the water. Amidst the splashes, Ombo discerned jagged, pointed teeth and even skin that seemed sharp to the touch. He soon comprehended that he was face to face with a crocodile. While he had encountered crocodiles in shallower waters previously, this sighting was unusual. Crocodiles were not typically found this far from the swamp. Ombo also noted that this wasn't a fully mature crocodile. It measured around 3 feet or approximately 1 meter in length. As the crocodile maneuvered in the water, Ombo noticed a sizable plastic bag caught in its mouth. The creature's attempts to open its jaws seemed like it was struggling. Almost as if it was choking. Reacting instinctively, Ombo leapt onto the crocodile. A daring move considering the danger it posed. With his hands, he exerted force to pry open the crocodile's mouth. A struggle that played out both above and below the water's surface. Ombo's physical strength, built over years of hauling his boat to and from the river, 
served him well. In a matter of seconds, he managed to extract the plastic from the crocodile's mouth, rescuing the animal from certain demise. Afterward, using his feet, he propelled the crocodile away, creating a brief window to swim back to his boat. There was a moment of tension as the crocodile and Anbo locked eyes before the animal swam away into the distance. Climbing back onto his boat, Ombo wrung out his soaked clothes, still processing the astonishing sequence of events. Adrenaline surged through him, and he took some time to compose himself and settle his racing emotions. However, the day's events were far from concluded, and an even more peculiar occurrence awaited. As Ombo journeyed back towards the river, he became aware of splashing sounds emanating from behind his boat. Upon looking back, he was astonished to find the crocodile once again. Uncertain whether he was in danger or not, Ombo increased his speed. However, the crocodile swiftly caught up, swimming alongside the boat. Gradually, the crocodile began gently nudging the boat, leading Ombo to consider the possibility that she might be attempting to engage in play. Acting on this intuition, Ombo offered the crocodile one of the fish he had caught earlier. The crocodile promptly devoured the offering, and continued swimming alongside the boat until Ombo neared his house. Coincidentally, Ombo's wife was near the riverbed, and shouted a warning in a panicked tone, alerting him to the presence of a crocodile. Yet, Ombo reassured her that there was no cause for alarm. Her skepticism persisted until Ombo docked the boat, and the crocodile approached her in a gentle manner. Cementing her new understanding, Ombo extended another fish to the crocodile, this time almost allowing them to make physical contact. Following further swimming in the river, the crocodile eventually departed. The encounter felt like an unparalleled and extraordinary event. Yet the narrative was far from its conclusion. Several years elapsed in silence. Before Ombo's wife relayed astonishing news. While Ombo had taken his son on an excursion outside of town. His wife contacted him with incredible tidings. The crocodile from years past had reappeared. Actively seeking Ombo. In his absence. His wife and neighbors, who had heard the story over the years, fed the crocodile. Subsequently, upon his return home the following day, Ombo found the crocodile once again in his vicinity, meeting in a shallow stretch of the river. Ombo and the crocodile greeted each other, with the crocodile allowing Ombo to approach closely. The one small crocodile had now matured into a full-sized creature, spanning an impressive 23 feet or approximately 7 meters from head to tail. Yet, the constant remained, the deep bond, an affection the crocodile held for Ombo. Recalling the day he had saved her life, the crocodile named Rizka exhibited an unwavering connection with Ombo ever since her return. Rizka often swam up to Ombo's house, not only seeking his presence but also a meal. In response, Ombo displayed an unexpected behavior. He would venture out in his boat to search for her along the river, reminiscent of how pet owners search for their lost dogs or cats. His commitment was unwavering, driven by a genuine care for Rizka. When he located her, he would feed her providing fish or even three chickens on occasion. Once satisfied, Rizka would gracefully swim away, and this interaction brought immense joy to Ombo's heart. His devotion to ensuring Rizka's well-being became an integral part of his routine. Even when Ombo had to leave town for work, he diligently arranged for neighbors or friends to visit and provide sustenance to Rizka. This approach guaranteed that Rizka would never experience hunger. Even in Ombo's absence, 
The relationship they had forged was unique and enduring. Transcending the boundaries of species and reminding Ambo. And all who knew the story. Of the remarkable bond. That had developed between a man and a crocodile. On a personal level. Over the passing years. Ambo's son, Booty. Developed a strong bond with the crocodile as well. Among his favorite activities was joining his father in feeding Rizka. While fish remained her preferred food. Special occasions warranted treats such as chicken or beef. The crocodile's presence served as a catalyst for change in booty. Motivated by the story of Rizka. He embarked on a mission to cleanse the river of plastic pollution on a weekly basis. This commitment fueled his aspirations to become a politician and take action against the pollution originating from the nearby shipping town. Over the span of the next two decades, the crocodile remained a constant visitor to Ambo's abode. Sometimes, she would trail his boat back along the river, echoing that initial encounter. In moments when Rizka sustained injuries, Ambo spared no effort in nursing her back to health. On one occasion, he even enlisted the assistance of a veterinarian, who arrived at the river. While apprehensive about getting too close to the formidable creature, the vet guided Ambo through the necessary steps and provided medication. The depth of trust and companionship Rizka shared with Ambo was remarkable and defied common beliefs. Their enduring friendship demonstrated unequivocally that such a strong connection could exist between a person and a crocodile, defying skeptics and inspiring those who witnessed their extraordinary relationship. In the herd, there is a close and strong bond between horses and horses. Due to the influence of the environment and other factors, they like to live in groups and are attached to each other. They never like to act alone. So when a strong wild horse phoenix was separated from his family, he still reserved a special place for them in his heart. And when it was rescued and the woman helped it find its family, the reunion scene made everyone cry. What happened? Wild horses are wild and strong animals. Their running posture shows a free and valiant demeanor. Which is one of the reasons why people like to watch horses run so much. In people's minds, wild horses represent freedom. So when people see wild horses in captivity and in cages, they feel very sad. Wild horses belong to nature and should not be restrained and restricted. They need space, freedom and rights without worrying about unnecessary interactions with humans. Phoenix and its herd of wild horses can better reflect this attitude of freedom. But bad luck still befalls them. In the eyes of some selfish businessmen, Phoenix and its companions are the strongest and most handsome horses on the American prairie. They want to have such a horse for their own entertainment or to show off. So they do not hesitate to spend costs a lot to buy such wild horses expecting handsome wild horses to appear in their garden. Under the temptation of money, the wild horses were captured by a group of cold-blooded humans, locked up in filthy stables with only tight gates and unpalatable food. Phoenix and his companions are waiting to be auctioned off and leave the endless grasslands forever. But Phoenix is not reconciled. It can't just watch the family members being taken away. It can't imagine the pain. It must return to its original home and run on the grass. With family and friends as before. Phoenix has always been the strongest and smartest horse in the family. And he firmly believes that his destiny will not be rewritten by humans. The strong Phoenix sprang into action. Leaping over the fence that surrounded them. Not only to gain freedom but also to prove to his family that escape was possible. Unfortunately, the fence was too high for other horses to cross. Phoenix was desperate. 
he looked at his family longingly through the fence. As if begging them to find a way to escape. But it didn't work. Ultimately. Phoenix had no choice but to turn away from his beloved family. We can think of the great pain and despair. That poor Phoenix suffered when he left his family. But then he did a very unusual move. Phoenix approached his herd again. As if he really couldn't leave his family. After it made this unwise act. The bad guys found the escaped Phoenix and captured it again. This time. The villains have locked Phoenix behind a high fence. Making it impossible for him to jump over it. Phoenix was disheartened and completely gave up the idea of running away. In the next few days, he refused to eat. As if this would make his heart feel better, and maybe the merchants would not take him away. After all, there was no man wants a dying horse. Unexpectedly, things suddenly ushered in a turning point. An animal sanctuary heard about the auction of wild horses. The animal protectors followed the clues to find the place where the horses were kept. They saw a very thin phoenix with bright eyes. The animal protectors thought that phoenix was a very smart, valuable horse. They decided to adopt him. So they rescued phoenix from his cramped quarters and sent him to a comfortable, ideal wildlife sanctuary where he could live in relative freedom. Animal defenders failed to rescue Phoenix's family and companions. Which was a great difficulty for them. Because they did not have enough space and resources at the time. But animal defenders are still working hard. Which also gives Phoenix hope. After being imprisoned for so long. When Phoenix came to his new home. He was extremely excited and felt free again. In order to make it a better life. Animal Defenders gave Phoenix everything it needs, hoping that it will fall in love with the life of half-wild horse. We opened the trailer door and it ran out right away. And I just remember Phoenix looking around, looking carefully at the trees and grass, and smelling the surrounding area. It was a really exciting moment for me. And we brought it gave it back its freedom, said Claire, a volunteer at the shelter. However, although Phoenix has a new home and new freedom, something seems to bother him, and he often runs far away, and then quietly stares ahead, perhaps introduce other horses to Phoenix, the volunteers thought, and he might befriend them, but while Phoenix accepted the horses, it remained cold and did not bond with them, the way anyone had hoped. It's clear that Phoenix misses its family. And it longs to be reunited with them. It even started showing signs of depression. Which worried the volunteers very much. Claire said, I always felt like he was a bit lost. Because when he jumped the fence and could have escaped. He came back to find his family. Which means Phoenix didn't want to keep them there. But he lost them in the end. In order to help Phoenix. Claire and several other volunteers returned to the place where it was held, although they could not save the entire herd and bring it back to the sanctuary. They planned to bring a few horses back to reunite with Phoenix, hoping to make sad Phoenix happy again. Unfortunately, the bad guys have already sold all of the Mustangs. The bond between Phoenix and his family was severed. The volunteers left frustrated. There was nothing they could do about it. And Phoenix seemed destined to spend the rest of his life. In grief and depression. But seven years later. Something amazing happened. Volunteers received an email from a person. Who said he lived a few miles away from the shelter. There is a wild horse that has been roaming his land. And he wonders if it belongs in the sanctuary. Through the photos. The volunteers were surprised to find that. The horse was very similar to Phoenix. And there was no doubt that. The two horses came from the same family. So they hurried to the man's house. And brought the wandering wild horse back to the shelter. 
the volunteers didn't know how Phoenix would react. When they saw their family members. And they were even afraid that Phoenix would not recognize them. Because of the long separation. But when everyone saw the picture of the two horses meeting. Their behavior brought tears to their eyes. Volunteers brought the Mustang to Phoenix. And Phoenix stared at it closely. It recognized that it was his family. But it couldn't believe it. The next second. Phoenix quickly ran to the Mustang. Both horses bent their necks towards each other. Rubbing against each other. While smelling the familiar scent on each other. They are close together. Enjoying the beauty of reunion. Claire and other volunteers shed tears of emotion. As they quietly watched the two horses play and interact. Phoenix is really happy. And all this is due to the family affection he never gave up. Although he has been separated from his family for seven years. The affection in his heart will never be forgotten by the passage of time. Thank you.